Hi friends, you are Rosario from Simply Options. A wise man once said, a good start is an important part of any journey. That way, our very first video on futures and option taxation has got a tremendous response. Loads and loads of love, wishes, support. We are humbled by it. At this juncture, I would like to thank each of you who has shared our video, retweeted, tweeted to extend the support on our behalf. Thank you. Today's edition is going to be a special edition. Probably this is going to be our last video on taxation for this season. Alright, what is special about it? We are going to unveil one of the tax planning secret in this video. Don't tell anyone. In today's video, we will see two segments. Segment 1, which is going to be taxation on equity and mutual funds. What is segment 2? Segment 2 is the tax planning segment which we are talking about. Herein, we will be highlighting the importance of capital gains over income tax with some intuitive examples. So, those who are well versed with segment 1, they can clearly skip this particular segment and directly click on segment 2 in YouTube which we have bifurcated into two segments. You can click on that and you can continue watching the segment 2. Those who want to see the chronological order, they can understand what is segment 1 and then come to segment 2. Let's now start with segment 1. In segment 1, we will see taxation on equity and mutual funds. This is broadly classified into equity and equity based mutual fund and debt based mutual fund. We will see this segment first. Here we will bucket this in three groups. Group 1 ultra short term, group 2 short term, group 3 long term. What is ultra short term? Any trade which you have taken for intraday meaning you have bought some shares in 9.15 and closed it at 3.15. All those trades we will classify in, in, under intraday trades. These trades are classified as speculative income because this trade very well you know that you have taken without any intention to take delivery of those shares. So all these particular income generated under this particular category is classified as speculative business income and will be taxed as per your slab rate. And this any loss made in this segment cannot be set off against any other business income. That is clear. Now in segment 2, short term, what is short term for equity? Any shares or equity based mutual funds if you have bought and you are holding it for less than one year, all those particular segment is called as short term. Here, the tax implication is based on your classification on yourself. If you classify yourself as a trader, then all these income will be classified under business income, but a non-speculative business income. If you are classifying yourself as an investor, all these income will be classified as short term capital gains. Okay, now these two packets we have done with it. What about if you buy some shares and holding it for more than one year? That will be classified under bucket number 3. Here, the tax implication is very simple. You will be taxed as per long term capital gains. Alright, what is the tax rate for short term capital gains and long term capital gains? Short term capital gains is taxed at 15% and long term capital gains is taxed at 10%. Both of them does not go through the income tax slab rate route, it is just taxed at a flat rate. Now let us quickly revamp what we have discussed till now. We have classified our equity and equity based mutual fund into three segments. Segment 1 intraday trades, all the profits made in this intraday trades will be classified as speculative business income and it will be taxed under income tax lab rate. Segment 2 short term uh, period which you are holding any shares holded for less than one year or all the income generated by selling these shares will be classified under uh, two ways 
if you classify yourself as a trader then this income is taxed at income tax trap rate if you classify yourself as an investor it is taxed as 15 percent flat rate third segment if you hold it uh, any shares for more than one year it is a long term capital gains which will be taxed at 10 percent flat rate now let us understand this with some quick examples example one mr a who has made 10 lakhs rupees profit in intraday trades his tax implication is he, whatever uh, uh, ta tax he has to go through is the income tax lab rate like, like uh, up to 2.5 lakhs there is nearly tax then 2.5 to 5 lakhs 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs that as per the lab rate he will be taxed now example uh, two mr b who has also made 10 lakhs through uh, holding hdfc shares for example hdfc shares he has holded for eight months and he has also made a uh, 10 lakhs gain if he classifies himself as trader this income will be again taxed as per his lab rate so mr b's tax and mr a's tax will be no different however if it will me classify himself as an investor then he will be paying tax only at 15 percent flat rate plus of course there is a basis so for 10 lakhs only 1.5 lakhs will be his tax now example 3 c who has bought this hdfc shares two years before and now he is selling this particular share in financial year 2021 he also made 10 lakhs gain for c since he has holded the share for more than one year there will be only 10 percent uh, tax rate for 10 lakhs he will be paying only one lakhs tax this is the difference between three different segments under equity now uh, let's see the final leg in our segment one taxation on debt based mutual fund uh, it is slightly different from our uh, previous segment of equity and equity based mutual fund how the way it is classified as long term and short term you need to hold at least three years for you to classify yourself as a long term investor in debt uh, based mutual fund all right well, then obviously less than three years is short term uh, you will be taxed as per short term capital gains right like a fixed flat rate right no the answer is here it is different here you will not be taxed under uh, any flat rate you will be taxed under as per your income tax lab rate thus if you hold any debt based mutual fund for less than three years all your uh, interest income will be taxed as per your income tax slab rate let, let me make this very clear now what about more than three years there you are given two choices choice number one with indexation choice number two without indexation with indexation you take indexation benefit and then pay 20 percent flat rate choice number two don't use indexation at all whatever interest income you are generating just pay 10 percent tax on it these are the two choices you have been given now let us see this with a quick examples example one mr x who has invested around one crore in debt based mutual fund say two years before and in financial year 2021 is redeeming it with a interest uh, income of 10 lakhs what is his tax implication very simple this 10 lakhs will be taxed as per his income tax lab rate if you remember in our earlier example mr a his tax implication and this person's tax implication is one and the same now oh, example two mr z who's uh, who has invested around same one crore around five years before in debt based mutual fund currently he is having around 30 lakhs interest what is his tax implication he has given two choices in front of him one without indexation he has to pay just straight away 10 percent tax on it so what he has earned all these years 30 lakhs interest 10 percent out of it will be 3 lakhs flat rate he has to pay tax that's choice number one choice number two you take indexation benefit and then pay 20 percent tax on it so oh, oh, I'm saying indexation, indexation. What is indexation? Just I'll briefly explain what is indexation. Uh, the cost of inflation is being adjusted to your investment, and then calculate and your investment is revamped as if if you have invested this in this particular period. What is your revised ca capital of investment? 
in a very simpler term your investment plus in inflation uh, compounding ca- coupled with computing your revised capital is called as in- indexation let us see with this in example so say you have invested 1 crore 5 years before how much you have earned around 30 lakhs you have earned now with indexation as i say for example adjusting the inflation of average inflation for the last 5 years your revised capital will be 1.2 crores instead of 1 crore if your revised capital is 1.2 crore the net interest what you have earned is only 10 lakhs 1.2 crores minus 1.3 crores sorry 1.3 crores minus 1.2 crores you have earned only 10 lakhs as your interest so this 10 lakhs you just have to pay 20% tax on it so you will be paying 2 lakhs tax so in these two uh, scenarios you can see in scenario 1 you are paying 3 lakhs tax in scenario 2 you are paying only 2 lakhs tax you will have to work out yourself on each situation and find which is more suitable for you let us conclude segment 1 with this and move on to our segment 2 Segment two is going to be a very interesting segment wherein we are going to emphasize the importance of capital gain over income tax. This is where we will be unveiling our top secret. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, capital gains. We wonder why income tax. 